sadly. I lost my apprenticeship. My parents kicked me out of the house for that. I'm driving off and the highlights break down. I get a text on my phone and I see that my dog's kicked the bucket. I mean, Miss has cheated. And I've got this terrible rash I prefer not to talk about right now. Oh, and my microwave exploded. Exploded! Blew up! Maybe next time don't put an actual can of spaghetti in there. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm not trying to question the universe or anything, but that kind of shit just doesn't plan happen. It's definitely ruined me day. <sighs> I feel like I'm some bullshit character for some twisted ride that's bit the dummy onto, just to make himself feel better about his own life. I know, it sounds a bloody stupid, but it's the only thing I can compare it to right now. You know what? Maybe I've been selfish. I've been ranting to you about all of my problems and I never considered on what you have to say. Well, g'day mate, how's it going? Oi, no, wait a second. Something isn't right. What the hell? I ain't talking to anybody. Have I been yarning to myself this whole bloody time? Am I a few really short and tell Patty? Now that I think of it, I can't remember getting here. Shit, I can't, I'm blank. I can't remember any of my life. It's like my whole life started with, I've had all sorts of problems lately and there was nothing before it. Wait, I, I, I might don't carry on like a pork chop. There's got to be a reasonable explanation. Right? Okay, let's see. It appears I'm in some sort of room. No, that's a star. Jesus, why do I feel so comfortable talking to myself? Wait. There's people. Just chilling right there. Sussing me out. Oh, they must be some kind of alien race. They must have abducted me and then fed me a drug which made me forget my entire life and made me talk to myself like I'm off of a glass. What the? Oi, aliens, can you hear me? I'm onto you. I know what you're doing. You want me to lose me pork chops and then spill the name and location of the Prime Minister so you can control his mind and have us all to set your command. <laughs> the Prime Minister, eh? I don't know. Which one would you want? We've had like nine in the past few years. I don't know. Would you want ScoMo, Gillard, Abbott, Kevin Bloody Rudd, eh, huh? <laughs> and get this right. When you brainwash me, you made me forget the majority of the bastards too. I've only got their names, and I don't think they'll do much for you. And even if it did right, the Prime Minister would change quicker than the bloody spread of the coronavirus. Boy, did you guys screw that one up. Not so advanced. Ah, oh, yeah, you nitwits. Emperor Dazagaz Steve McGarrett isn't going to be happy about this one. Is he, Bar? Spot if I ask them what the fuck is going on here. Oi, you. Yes, you, mate. Where the fuck am I? And how did I get here? Did I go out last night? Mate, just stop staring at me like that. Answer me question. Where am I? Do you want me to do a little, do a few tricks for you or something? Is that what it takes? Is this amusing you? No. No? Alright. How's that, eh? Still not good enough. Mate, one more and you better be talking after you. <laughs> Ta-da! Come on, mate. Was it 
the bloody steam kite? Have I done something wrong? Boy, you guys are so strange, don't you reckon? I don't know, what are you, drama kids? What's with this theatrical feel in the room? And that bloody light! I know what this is. I know where I am. My greatest fear. I'm trapped in a monologue! No! Oh, 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 shit! If this is a monologue, I got no, no doubt in your mind that it is. That means it's only, it's only a matter of time. Once the actor says, scene, it'll be all over for me. I may only have a few seconds to look at the bucket! She went on about single sex schools giving girls an educational advantage, blah blah. She didn't take into account how poisonous undoubtedly packs of teenage girls could be. Duh. School, bus, home, weekends helping out around the orchard. That was pretty much it. So, mum got her way. Good girl thought whether I liked it or not. I lived in protective custody. Don't get me wrong, Mum believed in openness. She wasn't strict. She didn't have to forbid me to do anything, because I didn't ask. She did it by emotional blackmail, worry. I could hear the anxiety clunking around in her brain even though she tried to hide it. It was there in her mind. People go up in the morning and never come home. I missed the bus once and didn't find out. When I got home, she tried to sound reasonable, but I saw the panic on her face. I guess I didn't want to see that face again, so I didn't do anything that would make her worry. That's how she kept me in protective custody. That's how I ended up a 16 year old who'd done nothing. I ended up retarded. Until last summer. That's when Kieran and his sister turned up at our place looking for picking work. I knew straight away it was special between me and Kieran, and he knew it too, so 
We got together. Mum totally freaked out about Karen. I tried to explain, but then stopped telling her anything. He was the most alive person I've ever met. He saw the whole of me, and I could be my whole self with him. When Karen and I first ran away, it was so perfect. We found work picking fruit, and we lived out of a car, which was fine, because it was warm enough at night to sleep out. And we found rivers to swim in, and they really healthy, and stayed right away from the trouble. It was my idea to go to Sydney, which was a mistake. Me and Kieran never had five kids alone in Sydney. We ended up staying at Mick's place. He was a mate of Kieran's. I was scared of Mick right from the start. We got stuck in that rat hole. No money. Off our face too much time to let him smudge. Kieran decided that we needed to get away. That's why he said yes to Mick about doing that break-in, so we'd get some travelling money fast. The house is one of those big show-off houses right on the edge of the city. Mick knew this guy kept these big rolls of cash. It was supposed to be easy. Mick's girlfriend, Dave. She was there too. She was so scared of me. I couldn't believe what Mick did to the dogs in the backyard. Smashed their skulls in one by one. We got inside, Mick started making whooping noises, whoop, whoop, smashing things, set the alarms off. Kieran's yelling at him, upset about what Mick did to the dogs. And Kieran, he's just yelling and he's just completely freaking out. It was crazy, it was so insane. Mick was just non-stop yelling at everyone, just smashing things. More alarms just kept going off. Kieran's yelling at him. He pushed Kieran's face into the broken glass. Jade was screaming, grabbing at Mick. He pushed her so hard she slammed into the edge of the table. And Kieran, he couldn't see because of the blood on his face. Mick was non-stop yelling at everyone to shut up like he wanted to kill everyone. He looked straight at me. His eyes so angry like he wasn't even human anymore. He slammed his hand here, squeezing the last bit of strength out of me. This is it. I'm gonna die right now. But then the pressure of his hand weakened for a second and I had a chance to get away. I had to get away from Mick, from Kieran, from everything. So I ran and Jade did too. He ran across the paddock until he got to the bus shelter in the den. Jade had a really bad pain when she hit the table. I said we should go to a doctor but she wanted to lie down first. Okay, she said. Rest your tongue. It was so good to lie down, close my eyes, and not cry. I must have fallen asleep. When I woke up, it was so cold. The dirt was biting into my face. touched Jade's arm, whispered, just in case she was asleep. Her skin felt like plastic. She was dead, right beside me on the bench. How can I describe all of this to my mother? I can't. I want to wipe things out of my memory, wipe it all away. dream or something, I'd just go up to the big bed, powering up to mum's room. The hallway was so much longer in the middle of the night. She half knew I was coming. I felt the booty about to be behind me, even though she wasn't properly awake. And then far away into the warm bed, That feels like some other universe now. Thought you'd find me here. Was it just a lucky guess? Don't know why.
way bothering me. Everyone else has. The paper, the telly, even bloody Australia calling us animals across the water, looking at us like we're another kind of species. Once we crawled out from under a rock. Mum believed it. She couldn't quite handle having a bad rep with people hissing about your own son, wondering how you could erase such a kid. So she made a shot. Said, I'm trustworthy. Ironic considering my dad loved her. She screams as I, as I try to tell my side of the story, but nah. Get out. So why exactly are you here? the others, or just to talk about the situation, because I don't really want to talk about it. Not tonight. In fact, never again. I don't want to hear one more fucking word about Tracy Morgan. It's a madhouse. I'm telegraph Paul saying shame, Blackrock, shame. Cops coming to your own home, questioning your every move. I must have been a list with what? 60, 70 guys? Your own friends looking at you funny? Wondering if you're the one? The one that raped her? I didn't see the end. Not when she bought it. At least someone else saw that. But during that night, I was in no party mood. It was right after you left me. And alcohol has become my love since. And even encouraged me to drown myself that night. But that scared me. So I pulled myself out of the water, pulled myself onto the beach, found myself on the sand hills with smoke in my lungs instead. The silence was thick. Though Gary was beating some poor song to death, once you got past that, science is thick. Until, between me and the waves, the full moon revealing the scene, Scott Abbott dragging Tracy Morgan by the arms. Tracy, come on, Tracy, come on. She was lying, legless, off her face. She was giggling by the sounds of it. Scott dragged her down onto the ground. He wouldn't stop talking. Talked to, he talked to her the entire time. Talked her into it. Talked her through it. stopped. She started to sound like an animal in pain. Scott's hand was covering her mouth so no one could hear her scream. And out of nowhere, two figures locked out of the dark. I couldn't hear, I, I couldn't see their faces, but I could hear their voices clear as Davo and Wayne Hanley. They were watching barracking, cheering him on, almost like it was a sport. They even thought about who was going to go first. First of the sloppy seconds. Names they were calling her. Names they were calling her. I ain't no dogger. It's just no one's come to hear my side of the story. Sitting inside me like poison, I just needed to let it out once. But please do not suggest counseling. Because I'll just stop the poison and even me. I just witnessed a 
bad thing happened, I'm just as much of a victim as Tracy is. I didn't rape her, I didn't kill her. started with the hot flashes. At first it was just like, yeah, I'm a bit hot. And then they just kept coming over and over again and again. They kept me awake at night. And they gave me perspiration stains in places that I didn't think were possible. I mean, what's this shit about men sweat and women glow? Glow? I'm radiating with the heat of an erupting volcano. My makeup melts off my face when I'm in the middle of washing up. And of course, I'm the only one doing the washing up. So I yell at my husband, and he starts to believe that his wife has been invaded by a body snatcher. I mean, he showed me no sympathy, or no empathy, or, or anything at all. He's starting to believe that his wife has been invaded by a body snatcher. So I went to the local gynecologist to see what's happening down there, and just, you know, just a little checkup, I guess. And he said to me, I guess I see, I see, and all of his body gets there. I could take you. <laughs> Your ovaries are depleting and failing to produce hormones like estrogen. And therefore, the rate of your menstrual cycle is really irregular, and this will last within 15 years, okay? And I'm starting to think, 15 years, 15 more years of this shit. He suggested I try HRT, hormone replacement therapy. It was in the style of patches. Once a month, they made me bleed 15 days a week. And I started to think, where do they go? Into landfill? Will it give us tomatoes the size of watermelons? And cows? Cows with PMT? Once a month they refuse to give us milk because they'll be crying in the paddock. It didn't work. I went to Bellinger Markets and I came across these organic and herbal tablets. They said that they're medicinal marijuana and it was really good for sweating, so I bought five packs of them, chucked them in my bag, and whenever I felt like it, I swallowed one, like a Tic Tac. I started to believe now that I'm one with nature and I've realized that we should take care of our planet. I've switched to being more environmentally friendly and, and sustainable. I've I use plastic bags and now I use paper. Now I use paper. I used to use plastic straws and now I've converted to being more environmentally friendly using metal straws. I mean the tablets did have some side effects. I started fantasizing about random council workers and, and having to restrain myself from yelling. Take me to your vault now. Now, two formats. 
personalities. Are you aware of how you came down here? Even so, it matters little whether you were searching for this place as I once was, or found your way down here by pure dumb luck. You surely would have realized that this place contained, that this place is, in fact, infinite. Trust me on that. And if it were not already clear, this place contains every book ever written, published or known, every story told to a friend, every piece of information that can be strewn together in a manner that creates a story, as well as containing stories from both the past and future. See, time down here works rather oddly. I've been here for 873 years, or so my tormentor believes. But time seems to work outside of the general idea, yet still have some semblance of it. Now, with that out of the way, any questions? Can I offer you some snacks, refreshments, perhaps? Ah, yes? Unfortunately, the grove does not sort itself, and that task falls to me. So, no, I have no idea where you would find a large supply of erotica. However, with all the history to peruse, I'm sure you'd find something. Anyone else? Yes. My tormentor. Didn't mention that. Well, seeing as you are here, I don't see why not. Besides, it has been some time since I've had the opportunity to talk to someone who wasn't simply there to mock me. Uh, uh, now, the exact details of my past aren't exactly relevant to this tale, so I'll get to the good bit. I had met a man who had claimed to have knowledge of this place and how to get here. I listened and found my way here and, well, let's just say I was a bit excited. I threw myself in with little regard for what could and could not happen. And before long, I'd spent an entire day in here. But I realized a bit of a setback. See, how can one learn all which is infinite in but a single lifetime? Well, the short answer is you can't. Which is why, when I met that man again, and he offered to share the gift I agreed. I shook his hand. I signed the contract. And met the eyes of the thing you should never bargain with. That was when I first met the devil. Ever since I have been trapped here, unable to leave, yet able to find an exit at the mere look at the wrist. Now, the devil, who is quite surprisingly a common visitor, eventually revealed to me that uh, they had decided to give me a charge, a wager, if you will. They stripped me of all the, of my personality and all that made me who I was, and told me to find myself amongst the infinite shelves of this place. I have been searching and have come to realize that without a personality of my own, I adopt the personalities of the characters within these stories, acting suave akin to Special Agent 007 or as aggressive and brutal as the infamous Edward Teach, scourge of the seven seas. Hmm. 
Now, if you're here by accident, I wouldn't recommend leaving empty-handed. There are a plentiful supply of books and other mediums that exist within these halls. Uh, I must profess a fondness for this. Julius Caesar, William Shakespeare's The Tragedy of Julius Caesar. And, uh, ah, yes, there it is. The Second Great Plague, a satirical novelette about the Black Death's reappearance in the... Ah, judging by your expressions, you're not quite up to that yet. Forget I said it. Oh, and if you're more of a Tolkien fan, well, uh, there's a whole section dedicated to his work. I only made sure that that's about 300 years ago. going to be honest with you. This facade has grown tiresome, and I'm certain you've seen through it already. So, look. I have read plenty of books and have gained plenty of advice about the existential, but what is a man who is nothing but that which he has taken from what he How do I know what voice is my own? How do I know who I was before I got stuck in this infernal place? How do I know the past that I told you is mine and not from one of these God's damn stories? How, how do I know the past that I told you is even mine? How can I distinguish it from any of these others? <laughs> in the waiting room. Guess I'm waiting. Might as well be prepared. Get ready. Okay, look, this is so weird. Never have done this, like prior to COVID. But I guess COVID sort of like shaken everything up. Cause like I would never have done blind dates. I'm not a blind date person. And heaven forbid, I would never have let Paula set me up. But like I don't really have much choice, do I? Oh, oh, he's coming.
she's here. You live with her. No, that's great to be 29 years old and still living at home. It's fun. Oh no, what have I done? I should never have trusted Paula. She only knows weirdos. alone again when we inevitably go into lockdown again because somebody else has some sort of world-ending idea. But I can't do this. All the good men are taken. And like all of the mediocre ones as well. Like even Paula is engaged. Paula! She microwaves butterflies! The world is too wicked for me. If the goddams and Burgundians do not make an end of me, the French will. Only for my voices should I lose all heart. Hark, do you hear? Dear child of God, just what you said. At the half hour they'll say, be brave, go on. 
concordance, they will say, I am thy help. And as that hour, when the great bell goes after, God will save France. It is then, oh then, that St. Margaret and St. Catherine, and even sometimes the blessed Michael, will say things I cannot tell beforehand. Then, then why do all these knights and courtiers and churchmen hate me? What have I done to them? I have asked nothing for myself, but my village not be taxed, for we cannot afford more taxes. I have brought them luck and victory, and set them right when they do all sorts of foolish things. I have crowned Charles and made him a real king. And all the honours he is handing out have gone to them. Then, oh then, why do they not love me? What do I need to tell you that the blacksmith can tell you that you must strike while the iron is hot? We must make a dash at Copine, and we leave it as we relieved all the honor. I may have I have to find reasons for you because you do not believe my voices, but trust me, the voices come first, and I find reasons after. If if ifs and ands were pots and pans, there'd be no need for tinkers. I tell you, bastard, your art of war is no use because your knights are no good and we are fighting. War is just a game to them, like tennis and all their other games. They heap arm up upon themselves and their poor horses to keep the arrows out. And when they have been poked from their saddle, they have to wait for a squire to lift and arrange about a ransom. When common folk go into battle as I do, they cannot afford armor, they cannot but afford ransoms. They cannot deal with ransoms as half your knights live by doing. When I, they go into battle, it is their life or the iron and God defend the light. Do you remember the day your knights and captains refused to follow me, to attack the English at Orléans. <laughs> you locked the gate to keep me in. And it was the townsfolk and common people who forced the gate. We went through the moat and over the wall. In my foolishness, I thought those who now cast me out would be like strong towers to keep harm from me. But I am wiser now, and no one is any the worse for being wiser. You call me alone. Yes, I am alone on earth. My father told my brothers to drown me. If I would not stay to mind the flock, France could perish if only our lands were safe. France is alone, and God is alone. And what is my loneliness but the loneliness of my country and God? His love will not fail me, nor his friendship nor his strength. You would be glad to see me burnt, but if I go through the fire, I shall go through it as a phoenix, and so God defend me. You promised me my life. You think that being alive is nothing but not being stone dead. It is not the bread and water I fear. Water has no affliction and bread no sorrow for me. It is no hardship to drink water if it be clean. When have I asked more than to shut me 
and the light of the sky, the sight of the fields and flowers, the sound of the wind in the trees, to take me from everything that reminds me of the love of God. When your actions tempt me to hate him, all this is worse than the furnace in the Bible that was heated seven times. I could do without my war horse. I could drag about in a skirt. I could watch the knights and soldiers pass me as they leave, leave the other women, but to chain my feet, that so never again I can walk the fields, nor hear the larks in the trees, to chain my hands and keep me from the sound of the lambs crying over the healthy frost to take me from all that brings back the love of God to me. When you tempt me to hate him, I know your counsel is of the devil and mine is of God. something so badly that it consumes you. You want it so badly that you can't stop thinking about it. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stand in your way. You can't rest until you have it. Well, I've never felt that way. About any. I, I mean, I want to, but I can't seem to focus. Nothing keeps my attention for very long. me that much before. I've been pretty happy. I've got my movies and my TV shows and my friends. And now my friends are finding other people. Female people. And they're changing. Damn it, things used to be great. We stay up all night playing video games and eating pizza for dinner <laughs> and breakfast. But now they want to do things like the laundry and the dishes and coming to me expecting me to pay rent. I'm just getting to be a real drag. But they do seem happy. Well, sometimes I wonder if I'm not as happy as I thought I was. You know, I, I like girls, but they don't seem to like that. I end up trying to pick up the weak ones from the herd. I go for the girls that no one else wants. But, but, but that's only because the other guys leave me the leftovers. <laughs> but I'm gonna have the last laugh because this leftover is pretty tasty. I met, I met this amazing girl who doesn't realize how amazing she is. She's shy and hides under a hoodie with thick glasses. But underneath all that is a girl that doesn't think I'm dumb or ugly or lazy. She thinks I'm cool and clever and creative. She sees me the way I want to be seen. So maybe it's time to make a change. Maybe it's time to be that man she thinks I am. I've been a boy long enough. It's time to grow up. It's time to say goodbye to Neverland. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Ah. Da 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 to focus on why I'm doing this. You know, it's 
saying? Love is blind? I never really understood that till I met Marianne. She's legally blind and wears these thick glasses, but I don't know how that makes it easy. I don't have to worry much about what I look like. I don't want to lose her. Except I don't really have her. We've talked, had more moments than I've ever, felt, have, ever had before, but no kissing or touching, really. <laughs> Except for that one time she touched me on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, I felt like lightning. Oh, I haven't washed that spot since. I want to keep feeling her and never let that feeling go. But I'm afraid to ask more until I'm good enough. Until I'm worthy of her. So here I go. Get ready for some exercising because I'm ready to rumble. Ah, 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 someone please call triple zero. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. Mary Ann was going in this video game convention thing. So I thought I'd go too. I wanted to show I was really into these things so I decided to go with my favourite video game character. Mario's got the facial hair and he's a plumber. What's my man with a plumber? <clears throat> hey baby, you wanna see my plumber's crack? <laughs> oh, oh, what a great pickup line. Oh, at least I thought it was a good pickup line. I decided to try it out just for fun. As one of those cosplay bags dressed up as Harley Quinn. I'm talking about. And not only did she not like my pickup line, but neither did her boyfriend who was dressed up as a Joker. And things kind of went south and he ended up chasing me around the whole thing. He ended up taking my clothes. Hard to <laughs> cool. Being naked. You see yourself differently. You, you see a lot of things differently. But when things couldn't get any worse, it was her. The woman I'm doing this for. But she wasn't Instagramming or Snapchatting my lowest moments of the world. No. She, she came up to me and gave me part of her Supergirl costume. She's my hero. And that got me motivated. I'm applying for jobs now, and I've got a resume together and everything. Here is what I say. There we go. <clears throat> Experience. They say you learn from your mistakes, and I've made plenty of mistakes. I figure I've made so many mistakes, I can only do good now. Education. I'm going to skip that one. Um, skills. Funny and loyal. I'm always there whether you want me to or not. People end up laughing even when I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> that takes me to my references. My mum and my friends. I am a loyal son and a good friend. I, I hope to add my girlfriend to that list as well. <laughs> I mean, I hope she wants to be my girlfriend. I want to be a good boyfriend and be worthy of that reference. Looking back at the resume, it looks like I'm applying to be a circus or a rodeo clown or something. <laughs> That'd be awesome! Hey, I can dream! And what are we without dreams anyway? I try to fear myself. Richard loves Richard. That is, I am I. Is there a murderer here? No. Yes, I am. Then fly! What? Great reason 
why I less revenge for myself upon myself, but lack I love myself. Wherefore, for any good reason that I myself have done unto myself. Oh. No, alas, I rather hate myself for hateful deeds committed by myself. I'm a villain. One that stands upon a promontory and spies a far off shore waiting his tread. Wishing his foot were equal with his eye. So do I wish the crown. So do I chide the means that keep me from it. And so I say, I have cut the causes off, flattering me with impossibilities. Say there is no kingdom then for Richard. What other pleasures does the world afford? I'd make my heaven in anybody's lap and deck my bodling ornaments in which kings, dukes, and lords of my words and glory. I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken dames. I am determined to prove a villain. Why? Would the love restore me though I was wounded? For I should not deal in her soft laws. She did corrupt such frail nature with some bribe. Mine arm up like a withered shrub to make an envious mountain on my back with its deformity to mock my body to shape my legs of unequal size to disproportion me in every part like toy chaos or in a like bear not think I was no impression like the dam. Am I then to be beloved? no joy to me, but to command, to check, to repair such as are of greater person than myself. I am determined to dream upon the crown, and while trying to leave it, will cut this world but As this head be round and pink, a glorious crown.
hew my way out with a bloody axe. Why? I can smile and murder whilst I smile and cry, content to that which grieves my heart. More sailors than a mermaid shall. I'll slay more geysers in the basilisk. Change shapes with Proteus through advantages and send the murderous Machabell to school. Can I do 